problem properties are very visible in the urban environment. But at the same time, it's an elusive problem because behind those doors and walls, there is a social reality that's sometimes very difficult to grasp. They may be vacant or they may be a property where a landlord is either not willing or doesn't have the means to make the repairs. They could be in various states of foreclosure. Chelsea is a very dense city. We're the second densest in the state, so all of our neighborhoods are very compact, and many of them are fragile. And all it would take would be for one property to become difficult to affect the entire neighborhood. And there were kids that were growing up in neighborhoods uh, where the, the buildings were dilapidated or, or, or abandoned and for decades. And we thought if we can get those numbers of those property properties down, we can have a better and uh, a safer community and a sense of, of that something positive is happening. So the Innovation Field Lab is really about problem-driven innovation. That means that we start with a thorough diagnosis of what the problem really is. And that means that even though there's problem properties in Fitchburg, Lawrence and Chelsea, the problem may be slightly different in each community. Anytime you're trying to implement something new, there's a challenge to that. And what I've particularly seen in a lot of the cities is they all track data on some level but they're in spreadsheets across different departments and those spreadsheets don't necessarily talk to one another. What we're trying to do is bring together data into one place so that we can see what each department is doing on a specific property and help make it more effective to collaborate. The students put together a prioritization system to help us hone in on, on the worst off or the ones that were the most appropriate for certain kinds of actions. The great thing about the relationship with Harvard is that up to now, we would deal with problem properties post facto. We would deal with them once they already became a problem. Once the police were called for service, once I was unable to collect taxes, once ISD had an inspection problem with it, once the Public Works Department had a trash problem with it. The tremendous thing about the work we've gotten through Harvard is that we now can anticipate. We have a model that has predictive value so that we're able to address a particular location before it becomes a problem. It's difficult to initiate major changes in city government and having students come in from outside to really take a look at what we were doing and the systems that we had in place and propose some tools and then implement those tools was something that we probably wouldn't have been able to do on our own because we're so busy with the day-to-day. -day. It doesn't leave us a lot of time to plan. And these students were able to create tools that we can use without us having to do that footwork. So it's been amazing. I came to the Kennedy School because I wanted to be able to make a more meaningful impact on the communities where I live. And so courses like this that put you directly working with city leaders and city governments and figuring out how to bring people together around a common problem like we have here with problem properties is an invaluable tool that kind of teaches you how to get in and get your hands dirty and work with cities in a meaningful way. I'm a little sad that this came towards the very end of my HKS career and not towards the very beginning because it was quite disruptive, I thought. And the simple reason was that there's this loop between learning something and then applying it and then getting feedback and then learning again. For the field lab, that loop was really quick. It happened every week. And there were real people with real consequences that we had to be responsible for. We developed this very practical tool for them that they're now like ready to use and excited about having. When do you get a chance to do something like that in a class? 